Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, I'm introducing a short new series where I'm gonna be talking about pretty much anything and everything in and around the vehicle. But something I wanna be super clear about right out of the gate is that I'm not gonna be addressing anything tactics related because that is so far out of my lane. I'm gonna be talking to you guys about maybe some medical things that we need to consider and safety considerations in and around the vehicle. But today we're going to specifically be talking about holster mounts. And spoiler alert, this video is essentially a list of reasons for why we should avoid vehicle mounts, car holsters, anything of the like as private citizens. And these are the reasons that I've heard over the last two years that really make sense to me when I start to consider the potential negative outcomes that I'm introducing into my life by taking my gun off my person and putting it in a holster that is attached somewhere in my vehicle. The first important reason why I think we should avoid car holsters is because the vast majority of them on the market right now absolutely cannot retain the gun in the event of an accident. So if we do the math, say you have a P365XL, which is roughly about 23 ounces inside of a car holster, and you're sitting at a red light and somebody comes behind you and they rear end you going 15 miles an hour, about 80 pounds of pressure is going to be exerted on that gun, which is more than enough pressure to kick that gun right out of the holster. Naturally, the next question we tend to ask is, yeah, but am I really gonna get into a car accident? I've never been in a car accident in my life. Maybe I'm 50 years old and I've never been in a car accident. In 2011, Forbes did a study that tells us that on average, each person goes through three to four car accidents in their lifetime. So if you haven't had one yet, you very well might be due. What's even worse is that a company called Strategic Safety did a study that over the course of a year, 13,000 car accident injuries were caused by objects flying around within the vehicle. Now imagine that object being a loaded gun with an exposed trigger. All of that to essentially say that regardless of whether or not you've been in a car accident before, regardless of whether or not you're taking steps to mitigate the possibility of you getting into an accident, you are still likely to get into an accident if you're driving a vehicle over the course of your life. And if you're using a vehicle mount for your gun, it is really likely to go flying out of that holster within that accident. And even if the trigger doesn't get caught as it's going about your vehicle, it's still a heavy metal object that's flying around your vehicle that could potentially injure you or one of your passengers. Another thing to consider within this same kind of risk factor is that a lot of these vehicle mounts are attached to a portion of the vehicle that is actually designed to deploy an airbag in the event of an accident. So again, that's one more thing to consider is, are you attaching that vehicle mount to a portion of your vehicle that's actually designed to deploy an airbag? And if so, note that that holster and potentially that gun will likely cause you injury in that accident because it's going to come loose either from the holster or the holster itself is going to let go of the vehicle. Another reason why I don't think that we should be using car holsters, and actually this is probably the biggest reason why I don't think that we should be using them, is because taking our gun off of our body and putting it into a holster in our vehicle introduces a large amount of unnecessary administrative handling and increased administrative handling adds increased risk of a negligent discharge. Think about it this way, the more we do something, the more likely we are to experience a potential negative outcome from that thing. So for example, let's say I get on a plane every single day for the rest of my life. My risk of getting into a plane crash is much higher than somebody who has only been on a plane three or four times in their lifetime. And the same thing goes for administrative handling. The more we introduce handling our gun with the trigger exposed, the more likely we are to potentially experience a negative outcome like a negligent discharge over the course of our lives. And if we're taking our gun off of our body, exposing the trigger and putting it into a holster in our vehicle, potentially multiple times in a day, every day of the week, we're introducing a really, really huge amount of unnecessary administrative handling when we could just leave it in the holster on our body. And another risk to consider within that same kind of category is that we're also increasing our likelihood of forgetting our gun in our car and potentially leaving it in a place that is visible to anyone walking past our vehicle, which is also increasing the likelihood of someone breaking our window and stealing our gun. And I realize that we probably don't think that we're going to forget our gun in our car. It's a really important piece of kit that we probably won't forget, 
but we wanna also consider again in the case of a car accident. What if you have to get out of your vehicle really quickly? What if you have to attend to your injured passengers within your vehicle? Are you much more likely to forget a gun in that situation or potentially not be able to find the gun that was once in the vehicle mounted holster and is no longer. And now that we discussed some of the main reasons why I really don't think that we should be using vehicle mounted holsters, I wanna also discuss some of the main reasons why I see people choosing this kind of setup. The two main reasons why I see people most often using this kind of setup is for comfort and for speed of access. And comfort while seated in your vehicle is actually a topic that I'm going to make its own dedicated separate video on but essentially your concealed carry setup should not be much more, if any more, uncomfortable seated than it is standing. You should be fairly comfortable throughout the day. And as you sit down, there shouldn't be any huge or major adjustments that you need to make in order to be comfortable. And if you are, there are some things that you will probably wanna consider as far as ride height or this specific holster you're using, whether or not maybe you need to be using a wedge, Wherever you're experiencing discomfort, there are different solutions. And that's something, again, I want to address in that separate video, but just know that comfort while seated in your vehicle is absolutely achievable. Now, speed and ease of access from the holster, whether it's in a vehicle mounted holster or inside the waistband is a completely different topic. And to be entirely upfront with you, I've absolutely not taken any training or any classes in and around drawing from the vehicle, shooting from the vehicle, anything like that. But I do know some really awesome people who teach about this and are knowledgeable on this topic. And the general consensus that I've heard is that drawing from the holster inside the waistband versus drawing having to reach into a car mounted holster is not really different in terms of speed and access. It's funny enough, we actually tend to practice drawing from the holster that is on our body more often because that's typically how we're carrying our guns. So the vast majority of us do have a lot more reps drawing from the holster inside of our waistband. And there are some potential safety considerations that we need to make when we're drawing from a seated position so that we don't flag ourselves. So I'm going to link some videos here, um, both in the description and up above on the screen here for you guys to watch after this video to learn a little bit more about how to safely draw from inside the waistband inside your vehicle. Thanks for watching the first video in this brief series. I'm going to be touching on comfort while seated, carrying inside the vehicle. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about how you want to place your seatbelt. This seems to be somewhat of a controversial issue. So I'm interested to get into that topic and hear some of your guys' thoughts. Thanks again for watching today's video and I'll see you in my next one. <music>